Jason Terrell Taylor, better known as Rapper the Game, professes his innocence as he's taken away in the back of a police squad car. Want to say a game? Anything you want to say? Once a mega stardom in the hip hop industry after his breakthrough album, the documentary, which had gritty lyrics, the game is now living a tragic life far from what a rapper of his caliber should live. After his fallout with G Unit, the game has experienced nothing short of frustrations and a chaotic life. With his polarizing personality, he has been able to amass a portfolio of enemies within the hip hop industry, further bleeding his already weak career. The game's story is a stark reminder of how a once hip hop's go to supervillain destroyed his career. Early life and background. The game's early life and upbringing in Compton, California, laid the foundation for the tragic trajectory shaping his future. Compton, a city known for its high crime rates and gang activity, provided a challenging environment for young Jason Terrell Taylor. Born on November 29, 1979 in Compton, Game was raised in a neighborhood plagued by poverty, violence, and drugs. His family struggled to make ends meet, living in a small rundown house in a crime-ridden area. The constant presence of police sirens and the sound of gunshots became a normal part of his everyday life. Growing up, Game Game witnessed the harsh realities of his surroundings. Gang activity was rampant, with rival factions vying for control of the streets. The allure of the streets was hard to resist, and Game found himself drawn into the world of gangs at an early age. As a young boy, Game was exposed to the Bloods, one of the most notorious gangs in Compton. Gang affiliation provided a sense of belonging and protection in a neighborhood where survival was a constant concern. However, it also exposed him to a life filled with violence, drugs, and constant danger. The streets became Game's classroom, teaching Teaching him lessons no textbook could, he learned how to navigate the treacherous terrain of gang politics, where loyalty and respect were earned through acts of violence and criminal activity. The pressure to conform to the gang's code was immense, and Game found himself caught in a cycle of violence that seemed impossible to escape. Despite his challenges, Game's family instilled in him a strong work ethic and a belief in the power of education. They encouraged him to stay in school and pursue his dreams, hoping that education would be his ticket out of the neighborhood. However, the lure of the streets proved too strong. And and Game's academic pursuits took a back seat to the allure of gang life. As Game entered his teenage years, his involvement in gang activities escalated. He engaged in criminal behavior, including drug dealing, to make ends meet. The streets became his playground, and he quickly gained a reputation as a fearless and ruthless individual. But the consequences of his choices were never far behind. The Game experienced firsthand the devastating impact of violence and loss. Friends and acquaintances fell victim to the streets, their lives cut short by senseless acts of brutality, which profoundly affected him. For for instance, at one time, his brother Jevin Taylor, who was 17 years old by 1992, was shot dead by rival gang members while at a gas station. The constant threat of rival gangs and law enforcement added to the already precarious nature of his existence. Moreover, to show the extremes of Game's involvement with gangs, he was once shot five times at the age of 18, and somehow, he miraculously survived the gunshots, although he went into a coma. In one of his Instagram posts, he reflects on the incident with a caption stating, October 1, 2001, 18 years since I was in a coma after getting shot five times in the dope spot. I look at this video of the younger me and I can't do anything but thank God for the opportunity to have a second chance. He further mentioned that, I'm telling y'all, I was a real F up. I never expected nor cared to live past 25 years old. I literally didn't give a Sometimes I do not know how I made it out of all I've been through, but I did. I guess that's the only important part of my story at this point in life. I'm here. But you ask, how grim was the comma? Or how did he miraculously survive? Here's what the game had to say about the comma. It was like waking up from anything. He further mentioned, I don't know what dying's like, but I know you just get to sleep and you never wake up. And if it's anything how that little short-lived coma was, then it's not really nothing no can deal with. And you're a can't do Shastris T about it. Amid the chaos, Game discovered a passion for music. Hip-hop became his outlet, a way to express his experiences and emotions. He began honing his skills as a rapper, using music as a means of escape from the harsh realities of his surroundings. Music provided a glimmer of hope in an otherwise bleak reality. It became Game's salvation, a way to channel his pain and frustrations into something positive. He poured his heart and soul into his lyrics, using his music as a platform to shed light on the struggles and injustices he witnessed in Compton. As Game Game's talent as a rapper grew, so did his determination to make a better life for himself. He knew that the streets offered no future, and he was determined to break free from the cycle of violence and despair. He inched closer to his dreams of success and redemption with each rhyme he penned. The game's early life and upbringing in Compton were marked by tragedy and adversity. The challenges he faced growing up in a rough neighborhood shaped his perspective and fueled his drive to overcome the odds. Rise to fame. 
The game's early exposure to the music industry proved to be a turning point in his life, setting him on a path to stardom amidst his tragic upbringing in Compton. His talent and determination would propel him into the spotlight despite his challenges. Music had always been a source of solace for Game, a way to escape the harsh realities of his neighborhood and a strained relationship with his mother. With his raw talent, captivating lyrics, and undeniable charisma, the game quickly became a force to be reckoned with in the rap industry. Moreover, he was determined and kept honing his rapping skills. Over time, he began to catch the attention of local artists and producers. During this time, he had his first taste of the music industry. However, one pivotal moment came when Game crossed paths with rapper and producer Dr. Dre. Dre, impressed by Game's raw talent and authenticity, took him under his wing and signed him to his record label, Aftermath Entertainment. This was a game-changing opportunity for Game, as Dre's mentorship and guidance would prove instrumental in shaping his career. With the backing of Dr. Dre, the Game's introduction to the music industry was nothing short of sensational. His debut studio album, The Documentary, released in 2005, showcased his raw talent and storytelling ability, capturing the essence of West Coast hip-hop. The documentary was a game-changer, producing five hit singles that took the music world by storm. The infectious beats and thought-provoking lyrics resonated with audiences, propelling the album to the top of the charts. The album's success was unprecedented, reaching number one on the Billboard 200 chart and earning the game a double platinum certification. It was a shocking achievement for a debut artist, solidifying his status as a rising star in the industry. But it wasn't just the numbers that made the documentary a groundbreaking album. It breathed new life into the West Coast hip-hop scene, reviving a sound overshadowed in recent years. The game's authenticity and raw storytelling brought a fresh perspective to the genre, captivating listeners worldwide. The success of the documentary catapulted the game into the spotlight, earning him critical acclaim and numerous awards. His unique blend of street sensibility and introspective lyrics struck a chord with fans hungry for an artist who could speak their truth. As the game's star continued to rise, he collaborated collaborated with some of the biggest names in the industry, from 50 Cent to Kanye West. His ability to seamlessly blend his style with others showcased his versatility as an artist. The game's early mixtapes also played a pivotal role in his rise to fame. These projects allowed him to showcase his skills and build a dedicated fan base eagerly awaiting his next move. With each release, he pushed the boundaries of what was expected, shocking listeners with his lyrical prowess and captivating storytelling. But he didn't know that the more he became successful, the more he grew apart from his record label. Yes, you guessed it right. They went apart. The game took an exit from the record label. Not an easy call to make, but with the level of resilience he had growing up, nothing would stand in his way. He had the world under his feet. He was a big name. In 2006, the game released his second studio album, Doctor's Advocate. This highly anticipated project showcased his ability to stand independently, free from the shadow of his former label affiliations. Doctor's Advocate debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, shocking critics and fans alike. The album's success was a testament to the game game's artistry and unwavering dedication to his craft. Doctor's Advocate produced three hit singles, including the emotionally charged Wouldn't Get Far featuring Kanye West. The game's ability to create music that resonated with audiences, regardless of the controversy surrounding him, was truly remarkable. With Doctor's Advocate, the game proved that he was more than just a one-hit wonder. He showcased his versatility as an artist, collaborating with various musicians including Nas and R. Kelly. These collaborations added depth and variety to his music, shocking listeners with unexpected and powerful collaborations. The game's third studio album, LAX, released in 2008, further solidified his position in the hip-hop industry. Although it debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 chart, it was a commercial success, shocking critics who doubted his ability to sustain his momentum. LAX showcased the game's growth as an artist, exploring new sounds and pushing the boundaries of his music. The album produced four hit singles, including the infectious anthem, My Life, featuring Lil Wayne. The game's ability to captivate listeners with his powerful lyrics and captivating production was remarkable. But here are some interesting details. Throughout his career, the game has released music on major record labels such as Interscope, Geffen, and DGC Records, as well as independent record labels. This versatility allowed him to maintain creative control over his music while reaching a wide audience, shocking the industry with his ability to navigate both mainstream and independent scenes. In addition to his studio albums, the game has also released many mixtapes and compilation albums. These projects further showcased his talent and contributed to his overall discography. The game's mixtapes allowed him to experiment with different sounds and collaborate with up-and-coming artists, shocking fans with his ability to evolve and stay relevant constantly. The game's music videos have also played a significant role in his career, adding a visual element to his storytelling. Known for their visually appealing and creative visuals, his videos have become an integral part of his artistry, shocking viewers with their cinematic quality and attention to detail. As the game's career progressed, he collaborated with various artists within and outside the hip-hop genre. From Snoop Dogg to Lil Wayne, his ability 
ability to seamlessly blend his style with others showcased his versatility and further solidified his impact on the industry. But here's what you might have missed. Throughout his career, the game has defied lofty expectations, shocking the industry with his raw talent, resilience, and ability to overcome adversity. His debut album, The Documentary, revived the West Coast hip-hop scene and set the stage for his continued success. Despite his controversies and challenges, the game's dedication to his craft never wavered. His subsequent albums, such as Doctor's Advocate and LAX, showcased his growth as an artist and his ability to captivate audiences with his powerful lyrics and captivating production. The game's impact extends beyond his music. He has collaborated with a diverse range of artists, pushed the boundaries of the genre, and used his platform to make a difference in the world. Now, with all these successes and accomplishments that the once little boy from Compton had achieved, you'd assume he kept his cool, or at least he stayed disciplined in his course and became more angular with everything he did, just not to mess up or tarnish such an accolade. However, that's the game you imagine. Instead, as he tirelessly clawed his way up through the fierce ranks of hip-hop, he also became his worst enemy. For double the efforts the game put into his craft, he also doubled down on the troubles and mystery, but how? Tragic losses. First, the documentary produced in 2005 was a masterpiece from start to finish, with no filler tracks, just excellence from back to front. Dr. Dre and 50 Cent served as executive producers on the record, adding their expertise and guidance to the project. The album featured radio smashes like How We Do, Hate It or Love It, and Dreams, which showcased the game's lyrical prowess and captivating storytelling ability. Moreover, the success of the documentary propelled the game into the mainstream spotlight. He became a household name known for his unique flow, captivating delivery, and unapologetic lyrics. The album's impact on the rap industry was undeniable, solidifying the game's place among the greats of his generation. The game's rise to prominence was meteoric, and for a window of time, it seemed like the sky was the limit for him. His talent and potential were undeniable, and fans and critics alike recognized his immense skill as an MC. Unfortunately, the game's journey would soon become tumultuous as tensions between him and 50 Cent began to bubble up. It all began when Game signed with Aftermath Entertainment, helmed by the legendary Dr. Dre, and was was placed under the wing of 50 Cent, who was at the height of his career with his G-Unit crew. At that time, G-Unit was effectively running the rap game, and 50 Cent demanded complete loyalty from his crew, including taking on his many beefs within the industry. The game had no problem joining in on the beefs against artists like Ja Rule and Joe Budden, but when it came to targeting Fat Joe, Jadakiss, and Nas, with whom game had no personal issues, he drew the line. These artists were specifically targeted in 50 Cent's song, Piggy Bank, which ignited a firestorm of controversy. Game refused to participate in the attacks against them, leading to a loyalty clash between him and 50 Cent. Furthermore, 50 Cent was not only dismayed, but also expressed his disappointment, feeling that the game had been disloyal for staying neutral in his beefs with Fat Joe and Jadakiss. He also claimed he wasn't receiving the proper credit for creating the documentary and had written many songs. These allegations sparked a feud between the game and 50 Cent that would have a lasting impact on their careers. However, the tension between game and 50 Cent reached its boiling point during an interview at Hot 97, a popular radio station. In a dramatic turn of events, the interview was cut short due to a shooting outside the station involving Game's crew, who had arrived during the interview. This incident marked the official end of Game's affiliation with G-Unit, as 50 Cent publicly announced his expulsion from the group. However, 50 Cent produced Hate It or Love It, featuring a doctored image of Game in a thong on the cover, further fueling the animosity between them. The beef between Game and 50 Cent had multiple touch points and flare-ups, making it impossible to summarize all the events that transpired. Rejected peace treaties were proposed, mostly from Game's side, but the feud escalated. Tony Yayo, Young Buck, and Lloyd Banks, among others, were also dragged into the conflict in various ways, further intensifying the drama. Shockingly, despite a press conference announcing their reconciliation, the peace treaty between the Game and G-Unit was short-lived. The Game and G-Unit continued to diss each other in the press and at concerts, fueling a feud that seemed to last ages. The Game, never one to back down, went all out and released 300 bars and running, a scathing 15-minute diss track against G-Unit that further stamped his lyrical prowess and ability to ride multiple iconic beats with ease. Amid these heated exchanges, the beef between the game and G-Unit produced over 100 songs, a testament to the amount of ink and hard work that went into the feud. It was a battle of words and skills, with both sides pouring their hearts and souls into their diss tracks. The game's relentless pursuit of victory in this feud became a defining characteristic of his career, showcasing his determination and refusal to back down. However, in 2014, the game and 50 Cent buried the hat 
catch it at a club, seemingly ending their long-standing beef. However, given the history of this battle, it is unlikely that it will ever truly be over. The unpredictable nature of the music industry leaves room for unexpected twists and turns, and who knows what the future holds for these two rap heavyweights. The game's habit of creating chaos wherever he went became more apparent as his career progressed. In 2006, he made headlines for getting into a brawl with Raz B at a Los Angeles nightclub. The incident further solidified his reputation as a controversial figure in the industry, but it doesn't all stop there because his taste for conflict and controversy continued to grow as the game's career progressed. He seemed to thrive on feuds and creating chaos wherever he went. Unfortunately, this behavior would have lasting consequences on his personal life and career. The game's feuds extended far beyond his beef with G-Unit. He found himself entangled in conflicts with artists such as Chris Brown, Lil Easy e Shuj Knight, Shine, Stitches, Exhibit, and Lil B, just to name a few. His habit of name dropping in his songs became a trademark, with DJ Booth even counting the game's name drops and confirming his reputation as mathematically accurate. While beefs are not uncommon in the hip-hop world, the fallout from the game's feuds took a toll on his career. His constant feuding left him with no one to defend him, and his alleged criminal behavior robbed him of his royalty. It became increasingly difficult for fans to focus on his immense talent as an artist as his scandals and feuds overshadowed his musical achievements. To give you more context on how the chronic feuds ate up the game's career, I'll discuss a few that left fans and critics dumbfounded. Of course, some of these feuds or beefs were baseless, nonsensical, and not worth the effort. However, surprisingly, the feuds constantly became the game's staple, replacing music. Or as they say, a drowning man will clutch a straw. His straws were all these meaningful sideshows, or at least you can simply put, a rolling stone gathers no mass. In addition to his feud with 50 Cent and G-Unit, the game was embroiled in another high-profile beef, this time with the legendary Jay-Z and his Rockefeller Records. The origins of this feud can be traced back to Game's 2004 track, West Side Story, where he made references that many believed were directed at Jay-Z. Although Game denied that the lyrics were aimed at Jay-Z and instead claimed they were about Ja Rule, the speculation and tension between the two artists continued to grow. Jay-Z, known for his calculated and strategic approach to beef, never directly acknowledged the feud with Game. However, in a freestyle on Hot 97, he took subtle shots at the Compton rapper by repeatedly mentioning the word Game, describing the freestyle as an ode to summer. This only added fuel to the fire and intensified the feud. Game, never one to back down from a confrontation, openly dissed Jay-Z and Rockefeller on stage, publicly calling out artists associated with the label, including Memphis Bleak and Young Guns. The tension escalated further when Game released a direct shot at Jay-Z and Rockefeller on his track My where he also aimed Shuge Knight and 50 Cent. The feud between Game and Jay-Z continued for several years, with Game consistently taking shots at the rap mogul in his music and interviews. However, in 2012, Game seemed to finally give up the beef, possibly realizing the futility of continuing the feud. On the other hand, Jay-Z only directly addressed Game once during a live performance of the Blueprint 3 intro in 2009. While the Game-Jay-Z feud may not have reached the same level of intensity as the Game 50 Cent beef, it was a significant chapter in Game's history of feuds and controversies. The clash between these two rap heavyweights showcased the power dynamics within the industry and the impact that personal conflicts can have on the music landscape. It's worth noting that Game's feuds were not limited to just 50 Cent and Jay-Z. Throughout his career, he has engaged in conflicts with various artists, including Joe Budden, Raz Cass, Lil Easy e Shuge Knight, and Yuck Mouth. These feuds often involve diss tracks, public confrontations, and verbal sparring in interviews, adding to the sensationalism and drama surrounding Game's persona. One of the most notable instances of the game's taste for conflict was his involvement in an argument between Tyga and Lil Durk. In a move that was met with apathy from many, the game unnecessarily inserted himself into the feud, assisting Tyga. This raised questions about why the game needed to involve himself in a beef that had nothing to do with him. The game's involvement in another high-profile beef came when he sided with Lil Wayne and took shots at Young Thug. The feud primarily unfolded through social media, with both rappers posting videos and pictures to diss each other. The game's comments towards Young Thug, including mocking his appearance and calling him a male stripper, were seen as immature and disrespectful. The game's beef with Meek Mill was another long and complicated feud that involved numerous side characters and incidents. The cause of the beef was revealed to be an incident involving Sean Kingston, Big Meech, Drake, Omelie, Beanie Siegel, and Chino. The details of the feud were convoluted and would require an entire video to dissect. However, it is worth noting that the game's relentless pursuit of victory in these feuds often overshadowed 
fueled his musical output. The game's beef often took a personal turn, with him using the rapper's wives or girlfriends as props against him. This approach to beef started to feel increasingly obsessive and perverse. Many of the game's comments towards women, including his partners, have been characterized as immature, disrespectful, and flat-out corny. In 2021, the game went on Clubhouse and gave a long list of famous women he claimed to have had sexual encounters with, including Kim Kardashian and Stacey Dash. These graphic boasts about his alleged escapades earned universal groans from hip-hop fans. It was a desperate attempt to gain attention and relevance, but it only further tarnished his reputation. The game's controversial attitudes towards women extended beyond his claims of sexual encounters. He often made cheesy social media posts about men being providers and defended Bill Cosby during his beef with Meek Mill. These actions and comments showcased a lack of maturity and a disregard for the impact of his words. The game's personal struggles also extended to his legal battles. Throughout his career, he faced many lawsuits and expensive legal battles. From a 2005 lawsuit alleging he adopted a fan to disorderly conduct and weapons charges in 2007, the game's legal troubles seemed to follow him wherever he went. One of the most publicized legal battles the game faced was when he filmed himself beating up fellow West Coast rapper 40 Glock. The incident resulted in a lawsuit, which 40 Glock eventually won. The game's history of creating chaos and engaging in physical altercations caught up with him, resulting in legal consequences that impacted his reputation and finances. In 2016, the game's chaotic legal troubles and controversial attitudes towards women combined into a lawsuit that would have a significant impact on his career. Priscilla Rainey, a contestant on the game's VH1 reality dating show She's Got Game, accused him of sexual assault. The lawsuit alleged Rainey believed the date she went on with the game would be filmed, but no production crew showed up. The game failed to appear in court several times, and he was ultimately ordered to pay Rainey $7 million. Looking at everything from a wider perspective, the game's career has been earmarked by a series of feuds and controversies that have captivated the hip-hop world. From his explosive feud with 50 Cent and G-Unit, to his intense clashes with Jay-Z and Rockefeller, and a string of endless lawsuits, Game has consistently found himself at the center of attention. These feuds, characterized by diss tracks, public confrontations, and verbal sparring, have shaped the narrative of Game's career and added to his reputation as a controversial figure. Worse, they've all pointed in one direction, tragedy. It is also argued that the game is a stark example of how to kill a rap career. Otherwise, how do you argue it out? If only he stuck to his course and avoided all these meaningless feuds, we could still enjoy and vibe to his songs at top levels. But you're left at a standstill. Will you keep up with his latest controversies, or will you stick to listening to his songs? Well, but how does the game cope with all these? I mean, it's a lot to take, and to an extent, regardless of having thick skin, some pierce through at last. I mean, pushing through all the hardships from his teen years and finally finding a breakthrough in music, which is short-lived, to losing his brother and all the royalties stripped off him, leaving him bare. And just when he's stripped of such noble royalties, he again starts battling costly lawsuits. Imagine jumping from a fire only to land on a hot pan. However, this one time you might be shocked because from a recent post the game did, it appears he's been calm and decided to focus on rekindling his once shining career. His lengthy post stated, PSA to any and everyone it may concern. I've always prided myself on my transparency and toe with sharing every part of my life and myself with my family, friends, and my fans. The past two weeks have been a nightmare for me. I have witnessed disloyalty on levels unimaginable by people I've trusted with my heart, money, career, and livelihood. Not only have I been backstabbed and betrayed, I've been left to pick up the pieces alone. He further stated, I'm in no way, shape, or form angry with anyone for choosing to act in the manner they have as of recent and send love and well wishes from this day forward as there is no hate, malice, or vengefulness in my heart. I know what you're thinking. Has the game finally cooled down? The answer is yes and no. It is because the atmosphere surrounding hip-hop culture, particularly feuds and beefs is multifaceted and dynamic, reflecting a complex interplay of competitiveness, ego, social and political context, media influence, regionalism, and the potential for resolution and reconciliation. So at least for now, he may be calm. However, it only takes a single matchstick to light a fire. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out our other awesome videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.